I'm Danny Epperson at the high ranking Commodore Dinner Theater in downtown Portsmouth. Thanks for joining me for WHRO's Cinema 15 and our presentation of 1954's The Cane Mutiny. There are lots of ways to deal with a horrible boss. You can quit, you can file a complaint with human resources, but what if that horrible boss is Humphrey Bogart? And what if you're stuck with him on a Navy ship in the middle of the Pacific, in a typhoon, and during World War II? That's when things get complicated, as you'll see in the classic 1954 drama, The Cane Mutiny. The film is based on Herman Woke's 1951 Pulitzer Prize winning novel. It's a fictionalized version of the author's time as a Navy lieutenant during World War II. His story focuses on the crew of the USS Kane, a destroyer minesweeper stationed in the Pacific. When a new captain is assigned to the ship, his increasingly bizarre behavior forces his fellow officers to take drastic action. The Kane Mutiny was directed by Edward Dimitrik and produced by the legendary Stanley Kramer. This is the captain speaking. Humphrey Bogart stars as the unsteady Captain Queeg, supported by a strong cast that includes Jose Ferrer, Van Johnson, and Fred McMurray. All thanks to our beloved Captain Queeg. He's in plenty of hot water. In the three years following its publication, Woke's novel spent 122 weeks on the New York Times bestseller list. Millions of readers were anxious to see the story play out on the big screen. The author only added to that excitement by adapting his book as a stage play that debuted on Broadway five months before the film. When the Kane Mutiny film finally premiered in the summer of 1954, audiences made it a box office hit. Critics praised Bogart, his performance as the quirky Captain Quig earned the actor his third and final Oscar nomination. The nominees for Distinguished Achievement in 1954. This is Oscar night. The film also received six additional Academy Award nominations, including Best Picture, Best Screenplay, and Best Dramatic Score. I'll be back after the film to tell you about how the movie's most dramatic showdown helped to change the U.S. Constitution. But for now, Tuck in those shirt tails, grab some frozen strawberries, and enjoy the Cane Mutiny. At first, the U.S. Navy wasn't gung-ho about getting on board with the Cane Mutiny. They didn't like the mentally unstable captain, and they really didn't like the word mutiny. The Navy finally agreed to cooperate after more than a year of negotiations. Their biggest demand, a disclaimer following the opening credits, making it clear that a mutiny has never occurred on a U.S. Navy ship. In his autobiography, director Edward Dimitrik wrote fondly about working with the Navy. He recalled that one commander even told him that the Kane Mutiny, quote, should be required reading for every sailor. The 1954 film marked a spectacular comeback for the director who was the victim of anti-communism backlash in the late 40s. Dimitrik was one of the Hollywood 10, a group of filmmakers that refused to answer questions about their alleged involvement with the Communist Party. He was cited for contempt of Congress in 1947, fired by his studio, jailed for months, and blacklisted by Hollywood for years. But in an odd twist, the man once accused of being un-American helped rewrite the U.S. Constitution. Starting in 1956, Congress convened a series of hearings about what to do when a president dies, gets sick, or is unable to serve. The Kane Mutiny came up often as the perfect analogy for the problem. Captain, I'm sorry, but you're a sick man. I'm relieving you as captain of this ship under Article 184. The struggle between Lieutenant Merrick and Captain Quig helped Congress realize that the vice president should not be the only person to decide if the president is unfit for office. The 25th Amendment was adopted in 1967, setting the rules for presidential disability and succession. There's another person who owes a debt to this classic. Maurice Micklewhite was an up-and-coming British actor who wanted to take the stage name Michael Scott. 
His agent told him that name was already taken and he needed to quickly choose another. The young actor saw the Kane Mutiny advertised at a nearby cinema. And from that moment on, he became Michael Kane. Kane jokes that if he had looked the other way, we'd all know him as, quote, Michael 101 Dalmatians. That's all I have for this week. I'm Danny Epperson, and I'll see you next time for WHRO's Cinema 15 and another classic movie. I'm Danny Epperson. Here's a classic movie quiz. 1954's The Kane Mutiny stars Humphrey Bogart. I'll answer all questions right here and now. What Hollywood star's stage name was inspired by the film? And I don't lose arguments on board my ship. Maurice Micklewhite, who changed his name to Michael Kane. No more movies for 30 days. You provide the popcorn, the couch, and the TV. We'll provide great movies like The Kane Mutiny. Watch Cinema 15 Saturday night at 8 on WHRO TV 15.